Placing windows in arcades very similar to placing doors. In the toolbox, underneath the design section, we have the Windows tool. And if we double click on it, our Windows default settings palette opens up. And over here, we have all the windows that are loaded in loaded libraries. These libraries load automatically when you start Archicad. And there is literally hundreds in there and each one of these windows is parametric which means that it can change its form by size, width, numbers of grills and many other options that we're going to go through. With the windows in ARCAD they may be all the windows that you would ever need but if they're not you can still create your own windows and there's also companies like CAD Image that create a great custom window builder and door builder which allows you to customize windows even more than the ARCAD windows. So if we just go through some of these quickly, I might just start with a simple bottom hung window and if I go across to the right hand side here in the preview and positioning we can see what the window will look like in floor plan, elevation, hidden line, shaded view and photo realistic. If I just leave it on hidden line over here these arrows here allow us to sequentially go through the library parts that are loaded in the library and just works by clicking on it and you go through it. I might just go to the casement W1. Doesn't matter which window we use first. If we want an empty opening, we just left mouse click on that and it creates just a hole. Then we have three options in placing the window, which is the construction method. We can place the window from the edge, have it with a sill, and have it with a reveal. Each one of these has a particular set of options. The anchor point, I can also place a window from the center or from the edge, just like the door tool. Then if I left mouse click the parameters, if we want to input information about the window texturally, just using straight text, we can use this area here. However, I prefer to use the graphical interface, which we'll get to in a second. And over here we have the size of the window. It's 900 wide and this particular window is 1500 high. I can change those dimensions by just inking this field out and changing to anything I like. Then the anchor. At the moment the window is sitting 900 millimeters above the bottom of the wall that it will be placed in. I can also anchor this and this is a new feature for version 10. I can anchor the window either from the wall base to the sill or from the sill to story zero or any story we choose in select story I can choose any story there I can also anchor the header to the wall base or the header to story zero and I can select the story once again I'm just going to leave it as default at the moment then when we get to the opening plane we can place the window vertically or if we've got a slanted wall we can associate that window to the wall. I might just do two examples of this and I'm just going to push OK which is just off the screen there and I'll place a window there and place it again. You can see there's the window however if I select the wall and angle it we can see that these are still vertical but if I select the window I can associate it to the wall and then it will be in line with the wall. I'm just going to undo that and go back to the floor plan. Once back on the floor plan we can see that I've placed four identical windows. I've placed four identical windows into this wall to illustrate the difference between all the anchor methods. These anchor methods are described here and there's four options there so I've put in four windows. The reason these options were introduced is because of the multi-story elements now in ARCAD. If you wanted to alter a wall from a single story element and wanted to make it a multi-story element, if you actually did that after you've placed the windows, the windows would go all over the place and follow your wall. Graphsoft has now put in place a method where they can stay exactly where you place them. And here's an example of them. Sill to wall base means this is 900 mil to the floor base. Next we've got sill to story zero. So that's the sill to this point here. So that's saying if I take this wall lower, that window will stay exactly where it is and this window will follow the wall. And the headers have the same sorts of options. So first of all, if I grab the wall and 
I might take this to minus three meters. We can see that the sill to wall base window is stuck with the bottom of the window and the header to wall base is also stayed the same because the windows are the same size. However, if I change this window to two meters and push OK, we'll see that that window has actually sprung down because the header has stayed linked to the wall base. If I did the same thing to this window, that will spring in the opposite direction. This is because the bottom of the window is anchored to the bottom of the wall. So that also means these two windows up the top will stay exactly where they are even though I extend this wall. So if I go back to the floor plan, now the first thing we'll notice is that two windows have actually disappeared because ARCAD is displaying it correctly even though it's a multi-story element. The windows have been placed one story down so we can't see it on this story. So if I go one story down, we'll notice that nothing is appearing. If I push the 3D window, we'll notice that they are actually there. A trap that you may fall into here is that there's another option on the wall tool. So if we just close this and go back up to the floor plan, if I select this wall and here we see that it's projected with overhead which is okay we're projecting the entire element but we don't see it on the story below make sure the wall is not displayed as own story only if you go to automatic push ok now when we go down a story there's our wall displayed correctly so now if we go back to our floor plan and I open the window tool again now that we've been through parameters we're going to go to the casement window settings this is a new part of the interface to version 10 and under general settings we actually have 10 tabs that we can navigate straight through the drop down menu here or via the arrows. Next along the top we have a dimensions tag and also a materials tag and there's one of these for nearly every one of these options but if we go back to the first general settings tab here we can choose the width of the window, we can choose the unit width, so that can be slightly different if you like, the nominal height. If you wanted to make the opening in the wall 50mm bigger than the actual window, I push OK, and then there's our 50mm gap between the window and the wall. If that is taken away, it looks like that. The other thing we have here is we can put a casing on the outside of the window and a sill on the outside of the window. We can also put casings and sills on the inside. We can also gang windows now. So if I left mouse click on that side of the window, I might just turn these off for clarity. Push OK. Now if I place a window in there and then I might delete this window and go back to the window tool and click on the other side here and place the window from the edge so all the lines on the floor plan that make the window look like it's two windows have been deleted it's a pretty nice function so if we go to the 3D window we can see there's the gang window there and they can be ganged vertically or horizontally you can also choose the closure method so I've got a couple of options there as well so then we go to the next tab which is frame and sash so over here we can define the opening direction either to the inside or to the outside we can define the timber sizes throughout that whole junction and then frame element joinery this aligns the bitmaps either mitering them or butt joining them if I just push OK these two windows now have been modified so this window here is mitered and this window here is butt joined. So now if I put a little marquee over this area and push F5, we see just that little area. And over here we see the butt joint and mitered joint windows. Close that, go back to the Windows tab, and then we go to 
coffee elevation and opening settings. I'll just go to an elevation view here. Now to define these settings we can actually add some elements to the window. We can add an upper transom and a lower transom. We can also define the width of the transom and the height that they occur at. You may notice that as we add the upper transom and lower transom the openings area here keeps growing by an extra field so if I hide that we'll notice that there's only two fields and there's only the main window and this is a, a fixed side hung window we can see it's greyed out but if I check the upper transom again we can see that there's another field there and we can define this type the type of opening by just selecting what we like there we can also open it in 3d if we like and if I check the opening line we can define visually where the window opens from we have two styles of that international style and Australian style and essentially they just change the way the arrows point and it can we can also define the type of line whether it's solid or dashed on both portions of the window so then once we've got that right we can go to the sash options and we can have no mullions at the moment that's the case and then if I check the horizontal vertical grid we can add grids for each portion of the window and we can define the horizontal and vertical bars in that window just by changing the figures here and that also works for the upper portion of the window as well we can change the thickness of the bars and we can also position the bars to go right through the window or just on the inside or just on the outside we can also put in an editable grid and a custom panel grid. This custom panel grid will go over a bit later. But if I select one of these windows and change that to an editable grid and push OK, if I go to the 3D window now, pressing F5, if I select the window, it's got all these hotspots all over it. And we can move these hotspots around and we can visually edit it in the 3D window. So if I go back to the window tool again, we can also apply a casing to the outside or to the inside. We can also define the timber sizes and of course the materials tab is there. We can also define the materials. The sills, we're gonna add a sill. There's a number of different types of sills we can add brick sills, stone sills and timber sills. We can define the sizes of them, where they sit and how they look in cross section. The sill can also be a board with much the same options. We can also apply shutters to the window. The shutters of course have their own styles, decorative, functional and positioning and the shutter width. But then we can also add a cavity closure, how the window connects with the wall, custom reveal. It's all greyed out at the moment, but if I left mouse click on this construction method and check custom reveal, we have this little icon here and I can check that button there and then we can change the angles on the inside. This is a new function for version 10 and it does something you, it was fairly awkward to do in ARCHICAD before. And if I click this window into the wall here, we can see that it's slanted the wall in there. So if I push we can see there's my window and I can change the angles of these reveals if I want to. And I can also make it just a normal reveal and define the custom reveal sizes. So the amount of offset and how it will sit in the wall in both elevation and floor plan. We also have the option of placing masonry arches this is also new for version 10 all sorts of different arches and we also and we can also define the parameters for those arches in here so once we've worked through all that and the materials and the materials tabs and the dimension tabs we close that up then we can go to the floor plan these options are exactly the same as in the door tool so I'm not going to go over these again and same with the floor plan display there's plenty of other move there's a couple of movies on floor plan display and also 
there's, there's a movie on this DVD about floor plan. There's a there's a movie on this DVD. There's a movie on this DVD explaining the display options. There's a movie on this DVD explaining the. There's a movie on this DVD explaining the display options, and we also have the display options explained in the in the in the door tool. In the model, we can choose materials, use the objects materials, or define just a generic material. Once again, the reveal is another section there where we can define the elevation or cross section and the floor plan view of the reveal and we can change those figures there. Dimension marker, there's a movie on this DVD that explains markers and how they work so just look for the marker movie and listing and labeling which there's also a movie on listing and labeling on this DVD as well. Now once you've gone through all these options it would be a great idea if you were going to use the window again and again to save it as a favorite. Call it a favorite and then you'll be able to recall it every time you open a project without having to go through all the settings. Also new for this version of ARCHICAD is that we can copy windows across elements. So if I select that window there and start moving it, push the control key down, I can drag that into an element across there which we couldn't do previously. If I go to the 3D window, I can also grab a window in a story underneath and even though it's not connected, I can drag that same window up, push the control key again, so we can copy windows across elements as long as they're in the same plane, horizontally or vertically. Finally on the window tool we have the corner windows. If I left mouse click on the corner windows, we can use almost any window with the corner window object tool. It merely places a window in any corner and mirrors how it's sitting. So if I chose any particular window, push OK, then if I click close to the corner, it doesn't have to be 90 degree corner, it automatically places the window regardless of the angle. Once the window is placed, if they need to be moved, you can still drag or stretch them individually without affecting the other window.